Welcome back to more designs. This is a video that I feel like I have been asked for dozens of times and I'm so thrilled to finally be able to share with you a walkthrough on how to build a planner on your iPad. I still stand by the fact I find it easier to do on a desktop, however I know many people don't have access to Keynote on their desktop. So today I'll be walking through how to make a planner just using your iPad with embedded links just like I've been showing you on how to do on a computer. Before we jump in, take a minute to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and leave any comments below of other things you'd like to see in the future. Alright, here we go! So I'm going to start by pulling up Keynote on my iPad. Keynote comes with iPads now. I'm not sure it always has, so it's possible if you have an older one it is not available. But I'm just going to start like I did on my computer and open up this plain white template and just tap on what's already there and delete it because I really want to start with a blank slate. From there, just like we did on the desktop, we want to adjust the size of our slides so that it will work really well as a digital planner. So we're going to go to the dot dot dot, then document setup. Then down at the bottom, you'll see an option for slide size, and you're going to choose custom. Now I have found that the dimensions that work best for me for digital planning is a width of 1920 and a height of 1200. And this is for a horizontal layout. You'll want to flip those dimensions if you want a more vertical layout. But today we're going to make a horizontal planner. So now that my dimensions are set up, I'm going to go into my master slide. So to do that, I'm going to click on the paintbrush and I'll see up here master slide and just like on a computer it has a whole bunch of options. So I actually want to edit my master slide and then just select OK. Now I'm going to select down at the bottom this blank slide. And you can use the other slides and delete what's there. This is just a little easier. You'll know it's a master slide because it has this blue ribbon across the top that indicates you're editing your master slide. This is going to allow us to build out our planner just one time and then it'll pull that layout into every single page. So I'm going to start with the cover and just using this rounded edge rectangle create what would be the cover of my planner. This green dot up in the corner allows you to adjust the size of the rounded curve and if you click on the paintbrush, you're able to adjust the color. I also like to add a shadow to a lot of the elements in my planner because I feel like this helps it make it look more realistic. Now one downside of Keynote on the iPad is it has a few presets for shadow, whereas on the computer you can adjust the shadow with a lot more detail by adjusting the opacity and the angle and all sorts of things. So you have a little bit less options here. Now I'm going to choose a color for my planner. And now I've got my background. Now one thing that can be tricky about using the iPad is it's very easy to accidentally pick up shapes. So to fix that, now that this is done, I'm going to click on the paintbrush, go to arrange, and lock my cover. And what this does is it allows me to not be able to easily move my cover anymore. So as I place other things on top, it won't accidentally move. So now I'm going to choose a rectangle that does not have a rounded edge to be my first sheet of paper. Now when you're placing this sheet of papers down, you want to make sure that you think about your tabs. You want to have enough room for the tabs at the top or along the side or both, depending on what look you're going for. Then I'm going to go in and change this to white. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow to this one as well. Once I'm done with that, I'm actually going to select the paper, hit copy, and then push and hold with my finger and hit paste. Because a notebook has several different sheets of paper, I like to actually build two rectangles on top of each other and I like to make one just slightly smaller so that you can see a little bit of an edge. So if you see now, if I zoom up by pinching, you can see that I have what looks like multiple sheets of paper now just by having two rectangles on top of each other each with a shadow. Now my last step before I build in the tabs is to add my line. And I will say of the features being put into my planner, the line is probably one of the most challenging to do on the iPad. It's very hard to get it to line up to exactly the end of the paper without being bigger or smaller. And the other thing is I like to really exaggerate the shadow when I'm working on my desktop because I think that an exaggerated shadow really makes it look like the pages are creasing. And unfortunately, due to the presets on the iPad, you can only add Add a certain kind of shadow. You can see there when I zoom up the line isn't perfectly lined up but from a distance you can barely tell. So again I'm going to add that shadow 
and pick a preset and actually I just realized my line isn't centered. Make sure you're using those yellow guidelines when you're moving your lines. That'll tell you when you have things centered both vertically and horizontally. And you can see here I accidentally pick up my paper. Unfortunately, I can't lock my paper down yet because I still have to embed tabs. So the cover is really the only thing I can lock down. Although once I get my line situated, I could lock that down. There we go. So we've got my paper, we've got the crease in the middle, and we've got my back cover. Now it's time to add in our tabs. So for my tabs, I like to use the rounded edges again. We're gonna hide this behind the paper so you can make it as long as you want. In fact, if you make it too small, it can be harder to click on the clickable links. So I'm gonna start by creating one and finding a color that I like. Then I'm gonna click on it and click copy. Press with my finger. And hit paste. Now it's all just about positioning the tabs that you want. I'm only going to do a few tabs for this planner just to walk you through how to do it, but you can easily make these tabs much smaller and have as many tabs as you want. A lot of planners have one tab per month down the side. It really depends on what kind of planner you're making. So now my next step is going to be to put these tabs behind the paper, but I'm actually going to wait for a minute to do that because I want to put the links on them before they get too hard to actually grab on my iPad. Now I can't build my links until I have slides to link it to, so I'm going to select Done. And then in my actual presentation, you'll see there's the template I just created. I'm going to delete this blank slide up at the top. And so now I can add a slide and keep picking from this one that we already have. So I'm gonna create one slide per tab that we have. So I'm gonna make four of these slides. And remember when we change our master template, this is gonna change. So don't worry about the fact that tabs don't look right yet. So now I'm gonna go back to my paintbrush and hit edit master slide. And now that I have slides built into my presentation, I'm gonna be able to build out the links. So I'm gonna click on this first tab, click link. And then I wanna choose link to slide and I wanna choose the first slide because it's the first tab. And then I'm gonna do the same to the second, link, link to slide, but this time I'm gonna choose number two, and I'm gonna continue down for linking my third and fourth tab. So then when I hit done, you'll see back in my original planner, there's now this little arrow on all of them which shows that they all have links embedded in them. In fact, if I were to go into present mode, I could actually click on those links. However, since every page looks the same, you can't really tell that that's what we are doing. I did want to share while I was working on this, my iPad did freeze at one point, and so I had to close out of the app. One of the great things about working in Keynote on your iPad is it saves as you go. So don't worry if something gets messed up or if your iPad dies or anything like that, it'll be ready. So now that my links are there, I'm gonna go back into my master slide again. And this time I'm gonna click, click on the paintbrush and click arrange. And I actually want to send the tabs back so they're between the paper. Now this can be a little tricky because you can't really see the tab because of the positioning on the box, but I'm just gonna move it back two layers. Click out, oh, and it looks like I guessed correctly because I perfectly pulled it back behind that paper. So I'm gonna do the same for this tab and the third and fourth tab as well. Now in this case, going back two layers and arranging worked, but you might find that you need to do more or less depending. And there I go moving that paper again. In fact, I'm gonna lock that paper just like I did my back planner so I don't, don't have to worry about continuing to do that by mistake. Now my next step is to add in the text for those links. So I'm gonna click the plus button and then under shapes is text. And for now, I'm just gonna call my first section, section one. Obviously, as you build out this planner, you can make it whatever you want it to be. Now this next tip comes from courtesy of one of my viewers who figured this out, and it is very finicky and hard to do, but when you make your text box extra long, you actually have the capability of spinning it with your fingers. So I'm gonna start by stretching it out and sometimes I can get it to work with two fingers, but sometimes it starts to zoom. So instead I'm gonna grab one finger on each side and physically spin the word section. 
Then I can shrink the section box back down to one and now I can simply move it to where I want it to be. I have yet to be able to do this without stretching the box out to be really long. So I find the easiest way is to stretch it out, spin it with your fingers, and then shrink it back down. Huge shout out to my viewer that figured this out because I certainly couldn't figure that step out. Now from here to make it easy on myself, I'm simply gonna copy and paste it, but then just edit it and put in section two, three, four, and five. And I did wanna point out, I just kind of used the presets and the fonts here. However, you can easily choose the text box that you have. Go up to that paintbrush again and the middle tab is text, so you can easily change the font that you have, the color of the font, the spacing, you name it. So you can definitely get creative in this spot too. I just kept it simple for now, but as you're building your own, feel free to play around with what you want that to look like. Now I'm gonna hit done and head back to my presentation and you see all the changes we just made are on every single slide. I wanna take a minute to show you what this looks like when we bring it into GoodNotes and actually use it as a planner. So I'm gonna click on the dot, 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 export and export as a PDF. And since I'm on my iPad, I don't need to worry about putting it anywhere specific. I can actually upload it right into GoodNotes. And make sure you import it as a new document so it doesn't save inside of a planner you already have. And now we have our planner embedded into GoodNotes. Now to show you that it works, I'm just gonna quickly grab my pencil tool and I'm just gonna write on the first page of each of this planner. So I'm gonna write section one, section two, just really quickly, because I want you to show that our links are working. And remember, you can do a lot more with this planner once you have the setup structured. You can add multiples of every page. You can put layouts within your planner for weeks or months or recipes or workout logs, whatever you're gonna do. So now when I leave editing mode, you can see I can click on any of the section tabs and it brings me right to that section so I can make sure my links are working. And there you have it. We've now built a planner for our iPad on our iPad. So for those of you who live on your iPad and don't have a desktop at home, this is a great strategy for you. And really you can do whatever you want once you master how to put together a planner and add links. I will see all of you next time on More Designs.